Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. I'm Ian. And today we're going to talk about the uh, the godfathers of, of, metal? of metal, or heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to be talking about the eras of Black Sabbath. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on that link down below. Go check out The Vinyl Den Facebook group. I know I say it every single episode, but just a cool place to continue the music conversation. We don't just talk about vinyl records in there. We talk about CDs and concerts and cassettes and all kinds of music all kinds stuff. of anything music related mm -hmm. uh there's also a couple other links down there there's one for the vinyl then merch page where you get to you know, those cool vinyl then t-shirts uh there's a link down there for the vinyl then patreon page if you want to support the show so it's greatly appreciated there's a link for the vinyl then spotify playlist where this week of course we're gonna have black sabbath where it's gonna be all black sabbath because that's what we're talking about on the show today mm -hmm. uh if you enjoyed the episode make sure you give us the old thumbs up Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So, to be completely honest, I am really only familiar with the Ozzy era of Black Sabbath. When Black Sabbath, when Ozzy left Black Sabbath, that's kind of where I kind of stopped listening to him. Obviously, it all happened, you know, years and years before I ever started listening to Black Sabbath. Right. But those are the albums I'm most familiar with. Obviously. You know, I, I know a lot of people that really love Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules, which were the two albums that came after Ozzy. But um, I, I guess we'll kind of start with the Ozzy era. Right. Because I, I think it's probably most people's favorite era of, of Black Sabbath. Yeah, I would say that's probably accurate. For me, it was I came into Black Sabbath through Ozzy. So yeah. I started listening to Ozzy before I was listening to Black Sabbath. But, yeah, the... Um, the good place to start would be the 70s, yeah. obviously, the beginning. I um, I think my entry into Black Sabbath was actually before I even listened to Ozzy. Yeah. Uh, my dad had a copy of Volume Four, mm -hmm. which was our little the album we got for the thumbnail this week. But um, and that's kind of where I started listening. That's kind of I think that's why I've always really loved that album. Mm -hmm. I go back and forth between Volume Four and Paranoid of uh, which one is my favorite. But um, you know, I, I think that really even like uh, I know a lot of people really don't like those last couple of Ozzy albums. Technical Ecstasy is an album that uh, yeah. I had never really listened to. I hadn't listened to it in years, decades. I, I think I'd listened over Your House one time back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. and until the box set came out, I never really sat down and listened to it, like I said, in a very long time. And that's there's, actually a really good album. Yeah, there's good songs on both those albums. There's a couple stinkers, too. Yeah. But um, it's I think it's just it's good songs by good musicians, but it's musicians that were getting burned out. I, I think I think it's obvious. When I think in, in the in that period, you know, the late seventies, music overall was really changing. Yeah. So I think Black Sabbath was really kind of changing, trying to change with the times and, and trying to do something different than what they had done earlier in the career and trying to come up with a, a, a fresh kind of sound. And they yeah. were all fighting their drug addiction, addictions at the yes. same time too. Yeah. You know, trying to make things work. It was just it was just a rough time for everybody yeah. involved. I don't think some of the tracks work. Some of the tracks are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. Like you said, there are some tracks that I can definitely do without on those yeah. last couple of albums. But, yeah, um, you know, yeah the, I, I think there are some people out there. I know I've, I've talked to a couple of guys in the Vinyl Dead Facebook group that are bigger fans of the Dio era uh, of Black Sabbath. But at least for me, it's always been, been those Ozzy albums, I, as you can see them right. over my shoulder here. Yeah, for me, I got into the Dio stuff as a result of picking up almost on a whim dehumanizer when it came out in 92 because uh, one of the songs was on the wayne's world soundtrack and i was already a big ozzy fan and digging the the sabbath stuff mm -hmm. so i picked up dehumanizer and that was my first dio album i, I wore that tape out yeah. i actually bought it on a cassette i wore it out because it's such a good album and that got me into the earlier dio stuff yeah. So, but I can I, for me it's a, there's a, it's it's kind of a disconnect. They're almost two separate bands because mm -hmm. the music is so different. It's different. It's very it is different. different. Yeah, and that was the intention really. Once they brought in Dio, who's a completely different singer than Ozzy, you almost have to go in a different direction. Yeah, so, yeah. Tony Tony knew musically they couldn't do the same thing that they had done with Ozzy, and they couldn't you know, with with a completely different singer because right. like you said it's a very you know Ronnie James Dio has a very different musical style Absolutely. singing style than Ozzy does so but uh, but Dio was on what he was on uh, Heaven and, and Hell, Hell Mob, Mob Rules, Rules Dehumanizer and then in two thousand and nine he got back together with the, with Sabbath but because of the reunion tours and everything 
Sharon wouldn't let them use the name Sabbath. Yeah. So they created a new kind of band called Heaven and Hell and released yeah. an album. So really, the that unit made four albums. Yeah. So. so Dio just did those two albums, and then they moved into... That would have been, next would have been Glenn Hughes. Glenn Hughes? Hughes? Yeah. Or, no, I take that back, Ian Gillian. Ian Gillian. And he did, I'll have to actually look at the list here yeah. because I don't I'm know, not familiar with the middle head. ground with like, so as much because it gets kind of muddy. It does. <laughs> you know, there's there's well, five, that, five different lead singers and there's like different periods where people come in and go out and not only that, but there's a lot of those um, mid '80s albums are out of print. They're hard to get, and Sharon won't let them remaster them right now. Yeah. I don't for whatever reason. I wonder if they're. I don't really know don't how know she has any control over it, but because it's just weird legal stuff. But as because of Ozzy now being in, as a primary member of Sabbath, even though they're done. Yeah. He's still technically a primary member. I don't know. There's some weird legal thing, but a lot of those albums are out of print. No. I think they will find, uh, eventually get reissued. Yeah. They're probably saving up and going to do like a box set kind of thing, which that'd be cool. Uh, I, I, I'd be done with Tony that. Tony Martin actually suggested that. his He said his contributions to Sabbath, he, there was talks of there being a box set, yeah. which when we were looking at the notes on this, I didn't realize how many albums Tony Martin played on. Yeah, as he was, several. Yeah, several albums. That's more than anybody else, I think, or Dan so, Yeah. as many. So after Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules, he got Born Again, which came out in 83. Yep. That was the first album with... That was the only album with Ian Gillian. That was the only album with Ian um, Gillian? You know, Rainbow and Deep Purple. Gotcha. So, and that's... Born Again is an album. I know a lot of people really love that album, and I see it posted on social media a lot. I've never listened I've to it. I've never listened to it. Yeah. So I, the... I definitely need to re kind of go back and listen to. I, I, I'm I'm somebody that uh, I'm not a big fan of, of Dio's voice, so uh, but I need I still need to go back and check out those albums and the other stuff that came out after because, you know I, I I do know that a lot of people really love all those albums. Like I said, I, I see Born Again a lot, and then Seventh Star that was with who, who was on Seventh Star? Glenn Hughes, Glenn Hughes, Hughes was on yeah. Seventh Star. Yeah, and that's the that's a weird one because the album cover is just a picture of Tony Iommi. Yes, and it says Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi, which again, I, it's it's weird. It had to been some kind of legal yeah, legal and I don't, issue. And may, I, it might be as a result of I think he's the only original member in the band on that album. I don't think Geezer or Bill are on that album as well. So that kind of brings us into the I guess the last phase. Uh, kind of the last phase of, of Black Sabbath. With, with Before the, it reverts back. Yeah. <laughs> with the, you kind of fall into the Tony Martin era, which is, he did what albums? I, I guess I should have pulled that up and looked. But. Uh, pretty much every album that doesn't have Dio or Ozzy on it after yeah. that. Yeah. So. so he did, his first album was The Eternal Idol, right? Yep. So then he did Headless Cross. He did Tear. Tear. Dehumanizer. No, no, Dio, no. Dio, did Dio was on Dehumanizer. That was where they kind of switch, revert back to the old one. Yep. And then he did Cross, Cross Purposes, Purposes, right? And then that was it. And Forbidden. Oh, that's right. He was on Forbidden. Yep. So Tony Martin actually did a lot of, of yeah, I Sabbath albums. He's the second longest. Maybe I'd have to count, but. It definitely maybe, saw a second because Ozzy was number one. Right. So, I, well, I, yeah, I'm just thinking in terms of a number of albums. I can't remember how many. Ozzy, Ozzy did. I have to count them. I yeah. know. I know which one. Quite a had. few, because <laughs> it was the first like seven albums he was on, mm -hmm. and then of course he came back and did thirteen. Thirteen, so. which is fantastic album. Thirteen is a really good album. Yeah, I. It, it was not a surprise to me that it did as well as it did, like commercially and critically, because it was just it, it's pure Sabbath. It's exactly what you'd want from a reunion album of any band. It yeah. sounds like it could have been made in the seventies yeah. with that original. Line it album. is a fantastic album. So as you can see from the episode here, I'm a lot more knowledgeable of the Ozzy years. And like I said, once you get past those first two Dio albums, I really haven't checked out a lot of the other stuff. I know you've listened to at least Well, I, as a, a result of getting Dehumanizer and then going back and listening to Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules, um, that turned me into a Dio fan as well. Yeah. So, um, so I like Dio's solo work as well. Um, beyond well, that, I like I said, I haven't listened to the Tony Martin era uh, stuff, a lot of it's out of print. It's stuff I really want to. I would like to listen. You to can stream it though, but it's, it's I all don't know it's all if available. You can I think it's all available on streaming? I'm pretty sure. I'd have to look, but I don't think some of those albums are not. Yeah. I know, I know for sure some of them are not available on streaming. But so I guess they're not all available on streaming. It's what albums are missing off uh, of the streaming uh, services? Quite a bit. Tear, Headless Cross, Forbidden. That might be it. 
At least those three. Those three for so sure. So there are some stuff that's not available, but you can probably find it on YouTube. It looks and... like there's at least one album with each, with each of those other three singers. There's one album with Glenn Hughes, one album with Tony Martin, and one album with Ian Gillian. Yeah. So, so there's definitely enough out there to, to check out. Kind of get a taste of, yeah. of what's of, available. What's on there. So. Obviously, the Ozzy and Dio stuff is all available. So Yeah. So, I don't know. You can drop us a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite era of, of Black Sabbath is. Like I said, mine is definitely the the Ozzy era because I, I think it's just uh, it was a great time for rock music and, and it was so innovative too. It was, it was yeah. relative to what came after it. I mean, black the early Black Sabbath even influences newer Black Sabbath. Yeah, you know, so, as far as that goes. Yeah. Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Like I said, I'm a big Black Sabbath fan. The early years, <laughs> you know, it's a, put that in quote, quotation marks there, mm-hmm. the, the early years, Black Sabbath. But um, like I said, I know a lot of people out there really love the Dio stuff, and I don't really hear the other singers get talked about a whole lot. So I'm not really sure what people's opinion of those albums are. You can drop us a comment and let us know. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace.